So Andrew's gone public with his experiences and all of his um, journey into the world of the contact phenomenon, the UFO phenomenon, only in December 2017. So it's a fairly new thing for him. He's an experiencer and a researcher, and he is basically putting the dots together himself. Now, we want to give the Paradigm Shift Summit a platform for experiences, because we all know that researchers have their place, but when the researchers join the dots, they're joining the dots from the experiences. And we really have to give a, a, a lot of um, credit to people who come and speak their truth, which again is a partly a consciousness in Manipura Chakra, which Andrew is, is coming from. So he's also a psychic, and he has basically making a lot of big calls about his experiences and the phenomenon that he's experiencing. So you guys will get to uh, evaluate that today and make up your own mind. I can tell you one thing, he's extremely passionate about what he's doing and he's a man on a mission. There's absolutely no doubt about that to get the word out about the UFO phenomenon and the, the beings and everything that's coming with it, which is part of the paradigm shift. And I'm looking forward to following his story um, over time. So. He's come all the way from New York City to be here, and he's got obviously some good reasons to be here as well, but please give him a very warm welcome from New York City, Andrew Raz. I uh, just want to thank Anthony and everyone for having me. This is quite an experience. It's great to be here. Um, as you see here, you know, that's me at work at the firehouse from about two years ago. Um, there's a guy's face in the background that I had to bleep out just because not everyone is into this stuff, so I respect people's anonymity. Um, okay, let's just get right into it. So here we go. As long as I live, as long as I breathe, with every beat of my heart, you will not be forgotten. This is a very, very important quote for me. This I promise you from Angela Miller. Um, when I was a young kid, me and my grandmother used to talk about you know, lights in the sky, UFOs, spirits, orbs, all sorts of things where, uh, you know, I couldn't talk about this stuff with other people. Uh, I could speak about it with my parents to a degree, but me and my grandmother, we just had some sort of special connection that I didn't have with anyone else. And uh, that's my grandmother right there, Joan. And uh, that's when I was five years old, 1985. And, uh, you know, she always believed in me. She just said, hey, whatever you feel inside, just stick with that. Always follow your heart, no matter what anyone says. And that's a, that's a key point to this because from 1985 till pretty recently, I didn't want to talk about my experiences. I was having things happen all the way from being a young kid, um, and I just kept them quiet. You know, I didn't want to come out about them. I didn't know if what I was seeing was you know, part of my imagination or if it was just enhanced from seeing things on TV. But I knew there was something more to it. I just didn't know what. I didn't know where to turn, where to go. Um, in 1999, I was in the US Coast Guard. And um, I was the night watchman. It was about, let's see, midnight. And I was out there alone. And I'm looking with these giant binoculars around the boat. And I see these two silver objects come by. And I see them moving. And eventually, they come together. They're, they're, they're getting very close to each other. So I call down, down to the bridge from what the flying bridge is. The flying bridge, we look at everything on the top of the boat. The bridge is where the bosses are. I call down. Next thing I know, there's about 20 of us up there. We're all looking at these objects in the sky. Now, at that moment, I did put it together that I was the first person that saw this. Why was it me? I wasn't even thinking that at the time. I was just looking at the sky saying, what is going on? What is this? So these two silver objects eventually just came together, and when they touched, they vanished. And we all looked at each other and said, what was that? But that was it. There wasn't another word mentioned. We just left it alone. The next day, I, I went down for breakfast, nobody said anything, nobody briefed us, and no one came in and said, don't talk about this. So later on in life, I said, wow, you know what, I can talk about this. It's not like I was briefed and sa someone said, don't ever mention this again. That wasn't the case. We just didn't know what we were quite experiencing. So that happened, and then around 2001, I had heard of a guy, Dr. Stephen Greer, um, who's a CE5 guy. and. Uh, I had the honor of flying out to California to the desert and learning that actually people could make contact. We could actually initiate contact with whatever these things are. I wasn't quite sure at the time what these things were, but I heard of this medical doctor, Dr. Greer, who's down here in the bottom right. Um, and we, that's a field picture. That's a picture of an orb on the left. That's a picture of me in the top left. 
and that's a picture of my contact group on the top right. Uh, all regular walks of life, people that are PhDs, to people that are garbage men, to I'm a firefighter in New York City, to you know, any walk of life, it didn't matter. We all got together, we sat, we meditated, and through this meditation, these things started coming through. Um, the very first night I was out in the field, I remember sitting there with about 25 people, and nothing happened. And I go, oh my, it's me. I'm the guy. I'm the one throwing off the energy here. You know what? Maybe I should leave. And I remember going back to my hotel room at, at night, and I'm laying there, and I'm looking on the wall. And now it's like 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning. And all of a sudden, this green light comes in the room. This circle. It's like the size of a flash on a camera. So I'm with my, my wife at the time, and I wake her up. I go, hey, do you see that? She goes, yeah. I go, what is that? I go, you know what? Let me go, ch go check it out. I'm going to go to the wall. I go to the wall. And I go to the wall, I put my hand around, no, nothing's there. I go, oh my God, I must be imagining this. Maybe I am nuts. I go back to bed, warm, the light appears again. Now it moves down about three feet. So we both saw this, and then the sun came up. That was about three hours from when we saw it to the sun coming up. It was just nonstop. The thing just kept flashing, flashing. I said, well, I guess it doesn't want me to touch it, but you know what, I'll just stay here. But being a New Yorker, of course, I got to get my hands in on everything, right? So I just stayed back. We sat there. We meditated. We connected with whatever this was. And then that morning, Stephen Greer came into uh, the place we were at. He goes, oh, so did anyone have any experiences last night in their room? I'm like, was this guy watching me? What's going on? I'm like, yeah, I think so. And he goes, well, tell us what happened. I said, well, this light came in the room, but I'm not sure what it was. He goes, well, what did you think it was? What did it feel like? I go, what did it feel like? It felt like there was a giant ship outside, and it set, sent like a little scout in. That's what it felt like. But I don't have the proof to show you that, but that's what it felt like inside. He goes, there you go. Now you're thinking. He goes, go with what you feel. He goes, you might see things. It may not be what it appears. He goes, but stay in touch with what is going on inside of you. So I'll never forget that. From that day on, it was like the floodgates opened. From that night in the contact field, day, night, we were seeing stuff during the day, seeing stuff at night. It just didn't stop. So of course, I spent a week with this guy and I go, well, what's next? I, I don't want to stop this. He goes, well, there's a contact team in New York you can meet with. I go, great. So I come back to New York. This is in 2011 that I met Steve Greer. <laughs> I come back to New York and I meet a team and uh, we're meditating, we're meeting once a month up in Albany, New York. I'm sitting there one night and all of a sudden I see these purple drops coming down from the ceiling. I'm like, what is that? It looks like raindrops coming down from the ceiling, they're coming down one after another and they're going into my chest as I'm meditating in a circle. Now, of course, during a meditation, when it's quiet, you can't tap the person next to you and say, hey, do you see that? But I'm dying. I'm like, please, someone see this. Please. I, I, I hope I'm not imagining this because I know what I'm seeing. This is really happening. So I see these drops come down. Then I see the drops come back out, go back up. We stop the meditation. And I'm like, did, I, did anyone see that? I'm like, these things were coming into me. Well, a couple of people in the group who had been meditating for a lot longer than me, they said, no, I didn't see any lights going in you, but I saw beings running around you. I said, okay. And I've realized over time that, you know, if I'm seeing something, I might see drops or I might see lights. You might see a being. You might see a craft. We're all at different places. You know, and that's, that's something I learned over the years is just the respect where people are at. Not everyone is going to walk outside and see a being fully manifested. And when I first started doing this in 2011, I don't think I was ready to see an ET fully manifested. I probably would have ran away and said, oh, no, no, bro, I'm not ready for that. That's too much. Because that might have just been too much at that time. Well, however, as the years have gone on, I, and as I learn more about this process, I think it's, it's like I'm, I'm seeing more and more. The veil's getting thinner. I'm able to just see this, see through this more and more and more. So this is my contact group. Uh, we have about 25, 30 people. Um, it's the shift.rocks, Northeast CE5. That's our website. We have an amazing group of people. Uh, it's about eight, nine years now that I've been going up there. Amazing, amazing people. And I've traveled throughout the US. I've been to California, I've been to Florida, to Miami. Uh, I've been to Germany, Sweden, Switzerland, Australia. I've made contact all over the world. I thought that it was like, I have to take my contact group with me in order to make contact. I can't do it. And I've realized that there's just amazing people all over the world that you can make contact with. You know, when you sit, meditate, open your heart, this stuff is possible. Um, I remember having this contact and uh, 
one night, me and my mom, we wanted to go out to eat. So we walk into a restaurant in town where my mom grew up. And my grandmother, who I was very close with, she had just passed away like three months prior. So we're sitting in this restaurant, and this guy comes in with long hair and like six earrings in his ears. I'm like, who is this guy? And uh, the psychic medium comes in. And he's doing it like a reading of the whole restaurant, you know, and he, he asks, is it okay if I talk to you guys? I said, yeah, sure. Now, I like that. He didn't just come up and say something. He asks, is it okay? So I go, yeah, sure. He goes, someone in your family just died. They had cancer. It moved up their face. It spread to their brain. That's exactly how my grandmother passed away. So I didn't feed him anything. I just said, yeah, because I'm skeptical. Just because you say something, you got to have more than that, though. I wanted to hear a bunch of things. And he points to me and my mom, he goes, which one of you was born on Easter Sunday? My mom was in 1954, 56, right around there. Um, but she was born on Easter Sunday. Nobody knows that. That's so specific. So he said a bunch of more things that were spot on. And at that point, I'm like, all right, this guy must be real. Something is going on. There's something happening here. Well, I wait about a year. And I go back to him. Now, I haven't seen this guy in over a year. I go in, he lets me record the session. I still have it recorded. An hour and a half session. And I'll never forget this. He says to me, he goes, you have a relative that died and was buried in her christening dress. The girl's name is Emma or Emily. I go, no, I've never heard that. And I would know that if someone in my family died and was buried in their christening dress, that's pretty specific. Well, I recorded that and it's a good thing I did. I went home, went to my mom's, said, mom, do you know anything about this? She goes, come here, brings me in the living room of her house, points on the wall. There's a picture of a little girl in a christening dress. She goes, Andrew, that's Aunt Emma, but she died over 100 years ago. I go, okay, I need to go back and see this guy now. Because, like I said, I was open to maybe this guy has something going on, he has an ability, but when he said that to me, and my mother confirmed it, who's very iffy about this stuff, I knew that this guy was real. So I went back to him and he said, well, I train people to do this. He goes, I can't make you psychic. He goes, but I can show you how to interpret the messages that they're sending us. Once again, being a New York City firefighter, growing up, born and raised in New York, I'm still not buying it. Even with everything that was told to me, I'm like, well, maybe he could read people, but I'm a firefighter, I'm not a psychic. This still sounds out there. Well, I started training with him around 2011, 2012, and uh, I would meet random people that would come in and I would sit down with them, I would see things around them, I would tell them what I was seeing, and they were telling me, oh no, Andrew, you're, you're precise, you're spot on. And I'm like, all right, maybe this guy's paying them. You know, there's no way, there's no way, man. They're trying to pull a wool over, over my eyes. There's something going on. And I remember talking to some of my family, some are open to this, some, they're like, stay away from that. That stuff's nuts, that guy wants your money, this snap, blah, 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 blah. Well, if you know mediums, he charges you if, you if you train with him. It's incredible. You get three hours of training for $25. That's unheard of in America, at least. I knew this guy was a good person. He had a good heart. And uh, as it went on, I, I started to trust myself more and more. I sat in meditation for hours at times. There were times I would spend all weekend home. I would get up. I would meditate. I'd do what I had to do. I'd go back and meditate. You know, for me, Meditation, sitting in silence, that's when all this stuff got crystal clear. It's like I almost knew all along what was out there. I just didn't trust myself enough. I would listen to the media. I would turn on Fox News. I'd be more worried about, you know, who's the president and what's he doing. The president doesn't care about me. You know what I mean? Like, let's be real. My family does, though, and I believe in my family. And if I can connect with my grandmother and I can connect people with their relatives, well, that's something I want to pay attention to. That, to me, meant something. It, it meant something meaningful, something that, you know, I could have a voice in. And people were telling me, yeah, your reading is spot on. You are accurate. So still, I'm reading, I'm reading. And finally, it hit me that this was for real. I read another medium from Long Island who had 20 years' experience with this. And I said to her, I said, there's a little girl coming through. And her name is, starts with a V, I'll just leave it at that. And I said, she's showing me how she crossed. I said, and she's showing me something so specific. I see a man in an Avengers outfit with an A on his head. So why am I seeing that? And the girl I'm reading goes, oh, I don't know. So here I am, I'm like, oh man, maybe I'm imagining this once again, right? I go, no, I'm seeing this A again on the guy's head. And I'm seeing a little girl in a pink dress with a white star on it. She goes, no. So I finish the reading and then she goes, well, there was a girl with a V who passed. Let me show you her Facebook memorial page. So we're looking. As we're looking at the Facebook memorial page, there's a man in an Avengers outfit with an A on its head. I go, who's that? 
She goes, oh, that's the stepdad, I forgot. I'm like, oh no, you didn't know about the A though. She goes, no, I go, that's pretty neat though. The fact that we were able to go to this page and see that. Then I see a picture of this girl with a pink shirt with the white on it. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, now this is for real. So I have to make a decision, right? Am I gonna go ahead and trust myself like I should be? Or am I going to just stay in the background and just kind of stay away from this stuff? I don't know if, you know, if I want to go there quite yet. Am I ready to go public about this? So I kept reading people, kept helping them, just kind of did it like on the weekends. I would meet on Saturdays. I wasn't charging anyone. I was just training, just trying to help other people walking in. And I did my job as a firefighter. And, uh, you know, some guys at work knew about it as the years went on. Definitely more guys knew about it. And uh, it's amazing how people just find you or they hear something and they're like, hey man, uh, you're a psychic. I'm like, yeah, 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 I, yeah. What, what is it now? What are you going to say? No, no, no. Would you, meet, would you mind coming over and reading my wife? I'm like, what? yeah, sure, man. No problem. I'll help anyone out. But usually guys at work, they want to make fun of you. You know, oh yeah, what do you see? An angel in the corner? I'm like, actually I do. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Let's not go there today. But, um, it is amazing, trusting yourself, seeing things. For me, the more trauma, the more stress that I've had in my life, the more amazing contact that I've had in my life. Um, about two years ago, I was in a situation, I was with somebody, and uh, unfortunately they got sick, they just got very sick, they got cancer, they kept getting sicker. And I hate even sharing this story because I don't ever want to see anyone hurting, I don't ever want to see anyone going through pain, but it's so important that I have to talk about this. When I met this person, I saw something was going on internally. I don't know what, I'm not a doctor, I don't have those answers, I can't diagnose cancer regardless of what you hear out there. I do not diagnose cancer and I do not cure it. If I did, it wouldn't be up here right now, I'd be curing it. So, but I've heard all sorts of crazy things out there. What I do see is in people when I read them, if there's a blockage in them, I will see something like a circle pointing to a certain spot in their body. Now, if I'm with somebody or it's a relative, of course, I don't want to see that. But if I'm seeing it, I'm going to tell you. And if you don't get it looked at, there's nothing I can do about that. And being with somebody for so long, you know, and in a relationship with somebody, if they don't want to hear what you have to say, there's really nothing you can do. And that taught me a great lesson, that I can only work on myself. I can only look at myself. No matter how much you want to help somebody or change someone or cure them of whatever's going on, I just can't do it. You know? Ultimately, it comes back to you, your path, your journey. And uh, you know, for every loss I've had with things, I also meet a bunch of amazing people along the way. Um, you know, and I'm very blessed to be here, the situation that I'm in meeting these great people. This is all part of that journey. You know, every time I had somebody pass, it was like somebody new would walk into my life. Or I would have more contact. I'd go outside and see a bigger craft. Something else would manifest. Something to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Turning blue. Okay. So this past December, something told me, all right, we have to talk about this. We have to talk about this online or talk to other experiences. Let's get the word out there and let's see what happens, right? So this guy, Michael Harrell, was nice enough to interview me. He had interviewed a guy named Ray Hernandez from the Free Organization. I saw the interview and I liked the way he talked to him. So I just talked to Michael and he goes, well, let's have you on. I'm like, I've never spoken like about this ever. Uh, all right, fine. So I go on there, he interviews me and he goes, uh, Andrew, he goes, you're turning blue. I said, what? He goes, you're turning blue. I go, well, hold on, what? He goes, look at your computer. And I'm looking and I'm seeing my skin is turning blue. So he goes, get out of the room and come back. This is nuts. So I leave the room. I walk back in. I sit down. He goes, it's still happening. So I'm like, computer must be broken, right? There's no way this is real. I'm not turning blue. That's insane. Well, I eventually go out and buy another computer. Same thing happens. So it's not that. We post the video of this online. And a lady named Mary Rodwell, who I'm sure most of you have heard of, she immediately writes back, Andrew, I'd like to talk to you. I feel you're activating your ET DNA. That's the first time I had heard that. I go, what? <laughs> ET DNA? I go, whoa, 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 hold on. Seeing lights in the sky and spirits is one thing, but ET, wait, I'm one of them? Oh my God. So, uh, God forbid. No. So I'm like, all right, whatever. So I call, you know, I reach out to her. What's up, Mary? She's like, I like to regress you. I go, oh, well, I don't know about that. I don't know if I want to go under, and then we go into fantasy land, and I had 10 blue children, and, you know, <laughs> I like to keep it real but I have to stay open-minded, right? So I'm like, all right, she reached out to me and let's do this. So she put me under hypnosis. After the hypnosis, she goes, well, Andrew, you were turning blue during the session. She goes, that's impossible. I go, okay, what does that mean? She goes, well, you gotta find a geneticist. 
I said, a geneticist? I go, you want me to walk into a geneticist's office in New York City and say, hey, uh, yeah, I'm turning blue, doc. Check this video out online, right? He's going to say, you need to go to a psych ward. You know, like, you have to realize most people, when they see this, even people I work with, know, they're like, you're out of your mind, dude. Yeah, this is not really happening. I'm like, well, I'll explain it then. I don't have the answer. That's all I know. Well, through mutual people, uh, Mary said, go find a geneticist. We looked into getting the testing done. It would have cost about $10,000. I don't have that lying around, uh, unfortunately. Then I met a geneticist at Stanford Research Institute out in California. And uh, that's just another picture of me turning blue. Once again, the extension on my arm. My arm's not that long. You know, I have a regular arm. No special effects, no nothing. This is just what was recorded. Something happened while we were doing this. Meeting Mary Rodwell, I flew out to uh, Australia and met her. She said, well, try to find a geneticist, see who you can you know, find. I'm like, all right, so luckily, I found Dr. Gary Nolan at Stanford Research Institute. And um, he wrote back to me and he said, all right, I'd like to talk to you. He saw the video, saw the pictures. He goes, that's great. He goes, but I want to hear more about your experiences. What's really going on? So I told him what I knew, and I don't know any other geneticists that would even touch what I'm going through. They, don't even ha they, don't, they wouldn't even know what to test for or look for. He was nice enough to actually communicate with me. So this is about, I would say, February, March, we started talking. And he goes, all right, well, I think that something is going on genetically. He goes, have you ever had this happen in your family? Anyone else have experiences? I go, yeah, sure. Mom, grandma, brother, father, all sorts of people. But they don't want to talk about this. They're not ready to go on stage. They're not ready to talk to you. He goes, no, that's okay. I'm just curious. He goes, I think that what's going on is, he goes, you have an antenna. I said, what? <laughs> he goes, well, inside your brain, there's another brain that we call the antenna in the scientific community. I go, oh my God, an antenna? Okay. So what does that mean? He goes, well, basically, when you're outside, you're attracting the phenomena. I go, okay, that might make sense because when, it, when the sun comes out at night, as soon as the sun is setting, I start seeing these lights. Then I'll see these ships, and it'll happen from the sun going down until the sun rising if I stay outside all night. I'll have 10 hours of contact at night if I stay outside. I don't. I have a life. I have a job. I, I travel. I do things. But I'm like, it's like I can sit outside all night and have this happen. He goes, well, I think they're recognizing that there's something going on in you. I'm like, okay, well, what do we do about that, right? That sounds great. And once again, I'm not ready to tell the world about that. That sounds a little out there, but I want to get more data. Like, what do we do? He goes, well, we're going to study you. And it's not an overnight process. You know, I'm not giving you the stamp of approval that it's anything. He goes, but this is my, my theory. This is what I think is going on. And let's see, this is a long-term process. But we have a study going on, uh, one where they're helping people that are experiencing this stuff. Some people don't like this contact and actually don't want it to happen. So they're working on helping people uh, adjust the contact or kick it down, let's just say. They're also working on kicking it up. Now. I don't want to kick anything up. I have, honestly, I'm not just saying this, but I don't want to increase what's going on. Whatever is meant to be, I feel, is going to be. If it's naturally happening this way, I just want it. I don't need any enhancements. It's intense enough, you know, and, and it is unbelievable sometimes when I look back and think, this is really happening. I'm talking about this. You know, but there's other people in this room that I've met on this journey who, yeah, we've all experienced something strange that we just can't put our finger on. And uh, what really helped, too, was Dr. Nolan is very familiar with this topic. I'll just leave it at that on a personal level. And he was, it was more than just talking to a doctor. It was talking to somebody that was like, I understand. And that's what I liked. Along this journey, I've just met those people who have stopped and said, I understand, Andrew. I understand this thing's going on that we just don't have the answer for. But let's, let's work together instead of pointing the finger at, oh, it's this or it's that, or he's the expert, he's the expert. How about we don't know? How about we don't have the answers? Um, from what Dr. Nolan has told me, he said, we don't know what these things are. We don't have a definite answer. I can't tell you that for sure. He goes, just be careful. He goes, because people have been led along on a certain way, and then they find out it's not what they thought. Or they have a great message for humanity that we're going to have contact on this day, and it doesn't happen. Luckily, they have not said anything to, to that effect to me. It's just been, we're here. We know that you know we're here, basically, mutually. So I see them, they see me. I'm making contact. I start filming this, recording this. For some reason, my pictures, my videos, they process, they come out. Uh, I've had phenomena come down from the sky in the form of an orb, 
and then turn into a being, and then a craft, and then shoot a black disc out 10 feet from my head that was 100 yards out. And I'm like, are you kidding me? How do I explain that to somebody? That's just so far out there. But an experiencer knows that this is possible. Talking to Mary Rodwell, she goes, Andrew, if anyone doubts what you're going through, she goes, if they're an experiencer, they will know that this type of phenomena is possible. She goes, the regular world, the media, the, the news out there, maybe they're not ready for this. You know? So just be careful because you're going to put things out there that's going to attract some people that they're going to be in your face. They're going to be pointing at you saying you're lying, you're a fraud, you're a scam artist. So yeah, eventually that comes with this territory too. So I tried my best to just lay out what I was experiencing. Uh, have people you know, remain cautious and optimistic that I feel this is a good thing. I feel contact's a very good thing. People that have had bad experiences, I feel awful about. Um, that's not part of my story. Uh, it's just not. I've seen my dog, I've seen my relatives, I've communicated with them, I've communicated with other people's relatives, with other people's animals, taken photos of them. I mean, just some real fascinating stuff. <laughs> On New Year's Eve this past year, this is my dog, Odie. I'm talking on the phone to the lady from my contact team that runs it. She's a PhD, Marilyn Gowak. She's a psychiatrist up in Albany, New York. Amazing, amazing lady. I've known her for nine years. I'm talking about my dog who died four years prior. I said, I miss my dog, Odie. I just wish I could see him. I'm on the phone looking out the window where I live in Coney Island, and I see these lights coming by. I go, Marilyn, hold on. I got to take some pictures. Something's going on out there. So I look out the window. This is about maybe 100 yards out. I saw a row of lights, and then I could see something with like a gray head and black eyes holding something. These are a little blurry, of course, up here. They're a lot better on a computer screen. These are just some shots I had. You're probably not going to see them great. My dog died four years ago, but there was a gray, a gray-headed being with black eyes holding my dog as I was speaking about him on the phone. I took pictures, and I have a video. When they move, they vibrate. This is energy we're looking at. People say, well, that's blurry, that's not solid. Exactly. When you're looking at a spirit, something that crossed over to the next reality, they're not going to be solid. They're not going to come back in solid form, at least the ones that I've communicated with. They vibrate when they come back, and they move 1,000 miles an hour. It's so tough to see them or capture them, or I see them run by. I take pictures the best I can. These obviously were blurry right there, but that's my dog curled up. He's looking back at me like that in the window. And that's just a blown up picture of the light ship that they came on and uh, the, gray of, the gray alien there holding him. At that point, I, in my heart, once again, yeah, seeing it's gray and seeing the pictures, but inside, I could feel it. I could feel my dog was out there. That's why I said, I got to record this. Hold on. I took that video. I took the pictures. I knew at that point that, okay, my dog, wherever he is, is coming through with this being. Whatever this being is, this gray-headed being that keeps appearing in all these photographs that I keep taking, gray being with black eyes, they were showing to me that they're together, wherever they are, the afterlife, the next reality. Um, in my heart, I knew he was around. I just couldn't see him. I wanted to see him. I could feel my dog. I could, I could feel his energy around me, but I actually wanted to see him. And to me, this picture was very, very important. This proved to me that He's never left. He's heard, he sees, he is always around, just like these beings. I feel, okay, based on the information that these beings have shown me over and over in these images, that they are connected. They're all one. And they're telling us that we are all one. We're ultimately in this all together. Um, there is no separation, you know, and that was, that, that was very clear. My dog has probably appeared in about, I don't know, 50, 60 pictures that I have. This is just a red orb. I was talking about a red orb falling down from the sky. That's a red being right there with white eyes. That's, I don't know, 100 yards away, 50 yards away, whatever it is, out in the distance where I live in Coney Island. That's the shoreline right here where the beach is. I saw a red ball float down from the sky, hold on to the back of that craft. The red ball came down and turned into that. That thing turned to me, had white eyes. I'm taking there, taking pictures, videos of this. This is in like, around February this past year, I would sit outside in the middle of the winter and ask, oh, does anyone see this phenomena? I said, well, it's about zero degrees out. I don't think people are walking around looking for UFOs except this guy. And uh, I said, well, listen, if, if you could sit home and watch Grey's Anatomy all night or you could stay outside and see this and you're into this, you're probably going to go outside and see this. I'll catch Grey's Anatomy on the weekend or whatever. 
what was going on was so exciting. I kept seeing different beings. When you close up on them, yeah, you could see the faces better. You could see the outlines. I've passed these along to people. Some people, they just see blobs. They just, oh, this is just blobs. They're nothing. But I've sent this to some scientists at Stanford who say, oh, no, how did you get that picture? What is that? That's unbelievable. So once again, would they be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars at Stanford to research what's going on in my life if it was fake? I don't think so. I mean, I can't see the point in that. And Mary Rodwell, along with you know, Gary Nolan, putting the two of them together, you have the science side with Gary Nolan, Mary with the spiritual side. I feel it's very important that we continue to look at both aspects of this. I think this is a you know, physical and a spiritual experience, but also let's look at it scientifically. The fact that a scientist is willing to look into this is a huge step in the right direction. Years ago, there was no way a scientist would want to put his name out there or even talk about any of this stuff. You know, forget about having a conference like this 10, 20 years ago. I didn't want anything to do with this publicly 10 years ago. When I first started making contact, I said, that's great, I'll go to CE5s, I'll make contact, but no, 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 don't put my name on this, don't put my face in a picture. I don't want the guys in the firehouse to see this. Then I'll be crazy, you know? But now, it's just at such a different level. Did the message just come through, it's crystal clear to get this out, to share this with people? That's just another shot of that. That's just a closer up shot of that. That's the red being with the white eyes. Uh, this particular one at Stanford, they really like this. They were very fascinated by this one. That's just another close-up shot of that. Okay, so this is just very blurry. Once again, you look at, I have a page on Facebook, Hi Strangers in Brooklyn, and uh, this is where I take pictures, post them. They're a lot clearer than this. When I came here in March, um, I went to Mary Rodwell's house. I spent time, I slept over her son's house, and then I spent some time with Mary. And uh, she said, why did you come here? And I said, what do you mean? She goes, Andrew, you flew 40 hours to come here. Why did you really come here? I said, well, I trust you. I said, I wouldn't just let anyone in New York or anywhere put their hands on me, but I trust you. Something is going on here. She goes, well, I have news for you. I go, what? She goes, you're a father. I go, what? She goes, you're a father. I go, well, were the kids gonna come running out? What do you mean, well, I'm a father? She goes, you have children on the craft. And I go, whoa, whoa, hold on. This is just a different level now. What do you mean I have children on the craft? She goes, you have several children on the craft. You haven't seen them yet. You haven't met them yet, but they're gonna start revealing themselves to you. I said, uh, okay, that's gonna take a little time to, to sink and I'm not quite buying that one. That's really out there, right? So she goes, well, you're gonna meet their mother. You have hybrid children on the craft. You have you know, people here, and then you have people on the craft that are hybrids that are gonna come through and say, you are our parents. I'm like, whoa, hold on, this is nuts. So I leave Mary's and I drive down to like Byron Bay and I end up meeting this girl, Jess, and uh, it's raining, it's pouring outside, we're sitting down by the water in By Byron Bay, we look up in the sky, and all of a sudden the clouds part and this blue object comes. We take pictures of it, there are these baby faces in these blue objects. I'm recording this, taking pictures of this. I look at her, this is our first date, this is the first day we met, I look at her, I go, they're telling me that w w we are the parents of these hybrid kids. She looks at me, and she's an experiencer as well, so she, she gets it. She's like, yeah, I'm getting the same thing. I'm like, I'm not sold though. You know, no, 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 no way, no, not yet, not yet, right? Well, that was in March. Since then, we've been inseparable. We have hundreds of photos with these beings. We've had interactions with them. Uh, we've kept in touch with Mary throughout all of this. These beings will literally fully appear and manifest uh, in pictures with us head to toe, uh, faces, eyes, ears, mouth, the, the whole nine. Um, but once again, I understand that talking about this, coming out about this, yeah, you're going to catch some backlash. You're going to catch some things, but I don't care. I'm at that point now. I know what I'm experiencing is so real and I get validation after validation of this. And coming to places like this, meeting people, it's beautiful to share this for other people out there to say, yeah, oh, I have hybrid kids too, or I'm pregnant in, in another dimension, or whatever it is. I don't doubt anything, you know, but I look at it like, hey, you gotta have some proof. Show me something, show me some photos, show me a video, let's talk about this. You can't just say that stuff because, especially being from New York City, I know I come out and say that, the media is gonna get a hold of this and eventually, they're gonna try to make you look like a nut job. Well, lo and behold, look at this article. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so as you see the date, July 21st, 2018, that's not too long ago. July 1st, 2nd, I get a message from a 
journalist, who her name might be up there, and uh, she says, I'm publishing an article about you. I said, oh, okay, who are you? Oh, well, I'm a journalist for the New York Post. Okay, I said, how'd you hear about me? Oh, a source told me about you. I said, okay, well, who is the source? Once again, if it's something positive, I don't see what the big deal is, tell me who it is. Because that way I know at least who told you this, what they told you, and I can help you out, maybe fill in some blanks. And once again, I don't mind working together with people, but if people are gonna attack me or come at me, that's it, conversation's over. I'm not going there, I don't need to engage in that negativity. So she goes, well, I'm not gonna reveal who it is, I have enough info on you that I could print this article. So I go, okay, well, I'm not telling you anything. I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna tell you something because one, you're not telling me what you're gonna publish, and you want a comment from me about 20 years of contact? I said, one line isn't enough. I said, you don't want to at least speak to me first and hear what I have to say? She writes back, oh yeah, I talked to my editors. We agree that we want to give you a chance to speak for yourself. I said, oh, oh, thank you. That's really nice of you. I said, I'm not interested. She goes, well, we're going to go ahead anyway and publish this. I said, I called my attorney, and I don't think that's a good idea. I'm not authorizing that, of course. They could print what they want and write what they want, so they wrote this article. And uh, like everything, there's good and bad. This comes out, you get some people saying, you're crazy, you're lying. Uh, there was a guy that was in Star Wars, and uh, you could look him up and see who that was. He came out and said, is this guy really seeing this, or is he crazy? So I wrote right out to him. I said, why don't you come over to my house? I'll show you how crazy I am. <laughs> come on, you're going to call me out. Back it up, man. Don't just say that. He didn't even reply. So I knew when this article came out, Unfortunately, that's what they're looking to attract. They want to get controversy, they want to you know, make me look like a nut job. All they did was re-quote me in there and then say where I worked, where I lived, and what I made, how much I made. That's just insane, that has nothing to do with contacts. I know that contact doesn't discriminate, doesn't matter what you do for a living, what your background is, I don't care what country. I like making contact in a circle, we just close our eyes, because then we really feel the same. We're not judging, we're not looking. These beings do not judge. They're connecting on, a, on, a, on that love vibration. Uh, unfortunately, I know the New York Post doesn't connect on that love vibration. <laughs> That's very clear. Um, however, I was contacted by Harvard University. And uh, a couple gentlemen there reached out to me. They said, we think this is fascinating. We don't understand the phenomena, and we're not experiencers, but we just want to talk to you. I said, great, come on over. So they came over over the last few weeks, and they were able to film the phenomena. They recorded it, you know, all this time, all these months, people said to me, get better cameras. Why don't you get better equipment? You need to get this and that and $6,000 worth of equipment. I said, bro, I don't have that money. That's the first thing. I said, second of all, if I get better equipment, then you're going to say, oh, I'm messing with the pictures. I'm doing this and that. How about you just find somebody that has good equipment and they come and record this. And then they could say, oh, it doesn't exist. Because if I get the equipment, then you're gonna say, well, you, you must be manipulating the equipment now. When people don't wanna believe in you, when they don't wanna trust this, they'll use anything to try to deny what you're going through. So I just sat still, and then once again, this amazing, amazing film crew came to me from Harvard, and they wanna film this? Go ahead. He had the top-notch equipment. I don't know what he had, but I'm like, hey, just film. He filmed me talking. I'm walking outside, I'm like, all right, we're gonna meditate for a couple minutes and we'll make contact. I didn't even have a chance to start meditating and the craft came through. I go, this is how it's been, man, for like, since like December, they've just, like the floodgates open. These orbs come and I feel that these orbs that I see are windows and when I connect with them, they show me the other reality. That's what I consider it, the other place, the other dimension, the afterlife, whatever you wanna call that. Um, that's been reinforced by a couple doctors that I've spoken to. They feel it is the same thing. I, these are windows. They show us things. To me, that just feels right. Uh, but like I said, I do not have all the answers to this. I constantly learn as I go. Uh, I can definitely say it's been a friendly, loving experience with them. The only nonsense and hostility I've caught has been from humans, right? <laughs> go figure, right? So, and it's not the expert. Now, the, re the researchers, the people that have come to me, they've been amazing. It's, unfortunately, it's been other experiences who would say, it's this, or it's that, or you're doing this wrong. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing, but something's happening. I said, if you wanna talk and we'll make contact together, I'm here. But when you don't do things a certain way, some people, they don't wanna talk to you, because you're not going with their agenda. So, right before I got here, I was contacted by a film company in Canada. Oh, we want to fly you up here. This is amazing. Have you ever seen angels or beings at the firehouse? We heard that you saw angels on September 11th. 
I said, yeah. I go, but I see them everywhere I go. It doesn't matter if I'm in a room or at a friend's house or in a church. If I tap into the vibration, I can see things. Yes, there were a few times that I had significant contact that I was in a firehouse. Um, I did see, I was <laughs> approached by four seven foot tall white glowing beings. And uh, I did take pictures of them. And uh, I said, what are you doing here? But they didn't speak to me. They didn't have mouths. People say, what do they say? So they don't say anything. They're in energetic form. They don't have mouths on them. They communicate telepathically, though. And they told me that they basically were angels that you'd read about in the Old Testament. They've been here forever. They're not going anywhere. But this isn't about religion. They just said that's what you would be able to interpret this, this as the best, is we're angelic. And I always said all these years, I see these things, these entities, these beings, I don't know what they are, but it just feels angelic. That's all I could say. Have I ever met an angel prior to that? No, but it just gave me a warm feeling. It gave me a feeling like I was with my grandmother. And ironically, growing up, my grandmother had like 200 angel statues. I don't know if there's something through that or if it's a coincidence, but um, it is interesting. In 1995, I remember watching Unsolved Mysteries with her, and, and I look at her, I go, Graham, Wherever you go one day, when you die, when you cross over, go to the next place, I said, just let me know that you're around. And she looks at me, she goes, I will, I'm going to haunt you. I go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> she goes, no, honey, I love you, of course, I'll come back. Well, having that medium approach me and my mom in the restaurant, that to me was that sign. And I feel that keeping up, you know, in honor of my grandmother, what we agreed to do at that young age, I feel that this is all part of it. I thought it was just psychic stuff at first, seeing other entities, seeing other beings around people telling them. But I realized, hey, like anything, there has to be people that come forward that talk about this. You got to be able to take a few shots. You know, you got to be able to battle some people that are going to be, you know, irrational. You know, I, I just say keep an open mind, keep an open heart. And if you look into something and you think I'm nuts, great. That's fine. I, I'm not trying to convince anyone. I'm not here to awaken any of you. If I do, that's great. But that's not my, my life's purpose. My life's purpose is to just be who I am. If it clicks, if it resonates, great, look more into it. If you don't buy it, look into it and say, no, I don't, I don't buy that, I'm just gonna move on. Because I had to really decipher over the years some people that, I don't know, what they were saying just didn't quite feel right or I didn't like their approach or they were trying to sell me something. I'm not trying to sell you anything. There's nothing on the table out there. <laughs> Seriously, no, I'm just being honest. I'm here, man. I want to tell you guys my story. Uh, Anthony was amazing to ask me to come out here and speak. I really feel it's important that, you know, the person that's out there, the average person, the average walk of life person that doesn't quite know what's going on, you know, I think there's something to that. Trust that voice that's in you. And then someone that doesn't think they're that average person, you feel less than, you feel better than. I think doing this work, it has the opportunity to humble you and really ground you and make you realize that, wow, man, whether it's this person, that person, wherever they're from, that we're all just trying to get by in life. You know, we're all just trying to figure it out, basically. You know, we're all trying to put it together and see what this is, what this, this awareness is, this consciousness is. You know, for years, science didn't look into the consciousness aspect. And I think that this stuff, the consciousness thing is right in the forefront. I could say the scientists that I've dealt with, the researchers, they are all over consciousness now. They, they tell me, they don't, they don't understand it. They don't know what it is. They don't know how some people can make this contact, have these beings appear, have them appear through them. You know, when I take pictures of beings around me, people say, oh, that, watch out, you're possessed, that's the work of the devil. I said, you're insane, dude, that's just, that's just not my experience. If you want to believe that, fine, I, I can't tell you it's not. For me, that's not what it's been. It's been loving, it's been peaceful, I haven't felt threatened, I haven't been told to do anything. I've been, what they have said is, whatever you want to do with this. That's up to you, Andrew, but you don't have to do this. Um, coming out in the news with that, of course, this led to more and more things, other places covering me, other researchers coming out saying, oh, I don't know this guy, I don't know anything about him, but he's lying about everything. Oh, okay, well, you know, if you're not even going to talk to me and reach out to me and hear my story, well, there's nothing I can do. And that's the problem with some of ufology or some of life. Some people just want to read a dramatic story and say, oh, that guy's nuts. I don't know anything about him. His picture isn't even in there, but he's lying about everything. And that's what I got from some people. Oh, you're out of your mind. You know, people in my family get harassed, get messaged from people. Watch out for that guy. He's out of his mind. They don't even know me. You know, like, but I, I know the mission I'm on. I know the path I'm on. The people around me, 
Uh, the ones that have come into my life with everyone that's dropped, the people that have come into my life have been more and more amazing and amazing. Uh, I'm very fortunate that I'm with somebody now who, me, her, and her children, were all experiencers. So coming home at night, and I walk in the door and they say, Andrew, can we go outside and make contact? I'm like, oh my God, I've been waiting for this forever. Of course we can. <laughs> for us, it's reality. For us, it's reality. Now, the children were making contact years before I met them. This isn't Andrew, this is, I'm listening to them, I'm hearing their stories, but I'm hearing a similar theme. They don't feel threatened by these beings, they're seeing them at night, they're coming through to them. I just sit there and listen, I don't say a word, and I say, wow, I wish when I was that young somebody would have just listened to what I was saying, because something was going on, but that generation, you know, my parents, not that they were wrong, they just, from what they were shown, it was, don't talk about that stuff. That's for Hollywood. That's the movies. That's your imagination, Andrew. That's not real. Yet, some relatives I have will call me in the morning and say, oh my God, Nanny came through to me last night. I saw her apparition in the room, Andrew. I go, yeah, I know. I, like, I know it's real. You don't have to convince me, but if it means something to you, great. You know, but don't hold on to that. You shouldn't be ashamed because you think you see something, or better yet, you know. And you know inside in your heart when you see something or someone or some entity, something comes through, they're directly communicating to you. Nothing can steer you off that, you know. I know I get that, that rattling feeling from like the base of my spine all the way up my spine. When I make contact, I know it's real. I know it's there. I could be around the block walking home and I've been with my fiance Jess or other people, other friends, and I'll say, I could feel them. They're, they're around the corner. They're gonna be sitting right there in this type of craft. We'll walk around the corner. I'll walk down the block recording as we're walking up and the craft will be there or the orb will be there or the being will be there. Uh, to me, it's on the feeling now. I used to go outside waiting for them to come. Now I just feel something internally. And I'll say, all right, when we get home, it's just gonna be there, it's gonna be right there. I can feel it, I can feel my dog. It's a different vibration, once again, my dog to, family or other people, there's just different feelings I get that I know, yep, that's him. I can almost smell, the smell is amazing. I can smell the scent of like my grandfather's pipe or things like that. I know when they're around. I said I could smell my grandfather's pipe or I could smell, I know my dog's around. I could just smell him. There's a certain smell in the air in the salt water that I know, oh, he'll be there. Or his, the craft, I call it, the craft that he comes on. It's his craft because when we take pictures, we keep seeing these apparitions. We keep seeing these entities on there. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Stay on your path no matter what it is, you know. I did not want to end up in the paper, obviously, but it did happen. And uh, it's actually, I would take it because meeting the people from Harvard and then have, having other people reach out to me, other experiencers saying, hey man, I know what's going on is real. I'm an experiencer too and I've been experiencing this for 30 years but I can't talk about it. I commend you for coming out, man. That can't be easy. You're a firefighter. What do the guys at work say? Do they say you're nuts? And I say this. Well, people know me. They know I'm open-minded, of course. But if I just walk into work and say, hey guys, I saw this UFO in the yard last night. It was beautiful. It was metallic. Let me draw you a picture of it. And if I drew it on the dry erase board, they would say, it's time to go to the psych ward, bro. You know, you need to go. But I come in with photos, and then guys that have wanted to have come to my home and experienced this with me. They're like, we know you're not nuts because we're seeing this. This something is here. What is it? We don't know. And I think with, with a rational person or you know, someone that's just open-minded to it, if you give them enough proof, let them decide. For some people, all this proof isn't going to be enough. Doesn't matter what I tell you. You know, 30, 40 years ago at a conference, people couldn't take pictures. They just had their stories. Today with the internet and how fast we can connect with people, oh, turn that camera on, tell those beings, show yourself, you better stay because I want to record you. Oh, these are the conversations I have with them. Stay, I want to film this, let me record this because I don't want to look like a nut. At least to me and my friends and family and the close people around me, that have experienced this, we know something is up, man. If something is up. Will I ever have that definitive answer? I don't know, maybe life is just a great journey and we're going towards something forever. I don't know. I don't know if it'll be set out in the end. But I'm not gonna give up because this has been the greatest ride ever, better than anything. This is the most soul searching that I've done in my life and it's made me trust myself. I know if I'm out, I see something in someone, I tell them, I don't care who they are. If, if it's something health-wise, I have to tell them. If it's a message from a loved one or something I feel that doesn't have to be said, don't say it, bro. You know, like you don't want to bother somebody out at dinner. But if somebody's saying, oh, that person's sick or they're pointing, yes, I've said it to people before. You know, it's something up with your arm. Yeah, it doesn't quite feel right. You know, or I ended up in Australia last time. 
and I went out to dinner with my fiance and her friends. And I said to one of her friends, I go, you just missed the doctor's appointment last week? She goes, yeah, how did you know that? You just met me. I said, I see a calendar and I see a date circle last week. Did you miss something? She goes, yeah, but it wasn't a big deal. I look at her, I go, well, if I'm seeing it, it must mean something, just go. I'd rather have it be nothing than just go. You know what I mean? For whatever reason they're showing me this, just go. She's okay though. So I always tell people, rather be safe than sorry. If someone's showing me something or a date, hey man, keep on top of that. You know, I've had it happen where people didn't go and got really, really sick and almost died or did die. I don't ever want to go through that again. Because going through that process made me question all of this. You know, if people I'm around aren't listening to the messages I'm giving them and they're sick, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I thought maybe I'm insane. Maybe I am nuts. Maybe I need to go away. Maybe I need to get locked up for a year or something. Maybe I'm out of my mind. I don't know. Because why wouldn't people that are close to me listen to me when I'm seeing things that are happening? I would tell them, oh, something wrong with your throat or your lung or this and that. They'd go to the doctor, something would come back. Now, most of them wouldn't come up here and talk about this. They would still say, Andrew, shut your mouth. Don't talk about this. I don't care. I think this is so important because so many more people have had this happen to them. And they'll come up to me and say, I had that exact same thing happen. I know that's real. So I think people have to be willing to put themselves forward. And yeah, take your, take your spot up there. When you feel it right in your heart, put yourself on the stage. Say that. What if you have to lose, man? You might help one person. And if I'm helping one person in here, I feel my job is done. You know, if that one person can open up and, and look further into this and it could change their life, that's powerful. And I feel as human beings, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help each other. Doesn't matter if you're doing a job for somebody, you know, putting a light bulb in, or you're doing a reading for them. I think it's just as important, no matter what you're doing in life. I'm a military veteran, I'm an electrician for 20 years over the years, and a FDNY veteran 13 years. You know, I've had a lot of life experience. You know, I've had close calls at work. Um, and trusting that intuitiveness, trusting that voice in your head has saved my life. And if you hear it, I would advise listening to that. I was at a, a fire a couple years ago, and it was a five-story building on the fourth floor. The fire was on the fourth floor, not on the top floor, the fifth floor. And we were ordered to go up there into that top area. And I looked at the guys next to me, and I said, no, don't go. Stay right here. And they looked at me. They go, what do you mean? I go, hold on. 20, 30 seconds later, boom, fire blew out of every window, every window on that top floor. And the guys looked at me. They go, how, how did you know that was going to happen? I just said, well, my soul talked to me. I heard and saw my grandmother say, don't go in there. And to me, there's no way I could prove that to you. There's no way I could show that to you. That's happened once in my life. That was it. And I swear to you, that was so real. She was right there. I saw and heard her. I've explained this. I've talked about this online. And uh, a company from Canada called me. Oh, we want to put this in a show. We'll fly you up here, blah, 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 blah. Do you mind changing a few things? I go, no, I'm not changing anything. OK, OK. Then they email me back a couple days later. Your story's great, but we handed it to the producers. We're going to fly out here next week, blah, 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 blah. But we're just going to like change one thing of how your grandmother appears. I go, no, not happening. Now I'm lying. I go, you're trying to get me to lie. I told you. The truth is the truth. Whether or not you want to believe it, I can't change that. But I am not changing my story. I'm not out there to sell you anything or sell that on TV. I could have sold that story. It's not what it's about. I'm open to somebody sharing the story or talking about the truth. But you're lying about this, there's just no way that's happening, man. I'm not attaching myself to that. I have enough people thinking I'm lying out there over this. I'm not going to knowingly go out there and lie just to put it on TV so it sells. Not happening, man. Not happening. I had a film producer from Hollywood contact me, a guy from Australia actually, awesome guy. Saw the vision as the same thing I was going through and, and wanted to do it honestly. We'll see what happens with that. I would gladly make this into something. I did not get into that for this, but if somebody wanted to put my story out there and show it the right way, I'm all ears, man. Let's do this together. I think it's a beautiful message, but I'm not making War of the Worlds Part 3. That is not happening. This is not an evil alien thing. That's insane to even put that in people's faces, you know? I, I just think it's disgusting, you know? And, uh, you know, I hope that this, this helped you guys today. Uh, stay open, you know, stay honest about it. We don't have all the answers. Call people, reach out to me if you want on Facebook. I have a page, Hi Strangers in Brooklyn. I just post my photos there. It's a closed group because it was a public group. 
And at first, people went crazy, right, and all sorts of crazy things. So I had to monitor it a little bit better. And anyone can join. I'll approve anyone. Um, it's just I'm trying to keep it positive. And people get, cr people just put some really crazy things out there that I don't think it's a good idea. It's bad energy to put out there. And uh, you know, moving in that direction. There's a lot of good people that I've met along this way. Any names that I've mentioned, feel free to reach out to them. There's no secrets out here. You know, they know I'm open and public about this, and uh, we just want to get closer to the truth. You know, as we keep going forward, I, I feel, yeah, we ascend. 4D, 5D, higher, whatever it is, whatever feels right with you. You know, people say I'm in 4D. I said, well, I still got to pay taxes and go to work, bro. You know, if, I'm, if that's in 4D, great, whatever that means. I, you know, I don't get into all that, but if that works for you or feels right, great. Share that. Talk about this because that will sound right to somebody else. And you will resonate with them and you will help them. Keep talking about it and stay honest. And, uh, yeah, I'll be out there in the front if you guys have any questions, you guys want to talk. Uh, I'll be here tomorrow, too. Um, th this is just absolutely amazing. This is the first time I've ever spoken in front of a crowd like this. So you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, I will be speaking next month down in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, the promoters there were like, we need you to come speak at this conference. I said, I don't do conferences. I don't want to do that. Oh, come on, we need an experience. All right, fine, I'll do it. Then I talked to Anthony, and he's a great guy. I said, absolutely, whatever you need, man. And we got mutual friends, and these are the kinds of conferences I like. You know, this, this is awesome. This is really about waking up and finding your own truth, you know, not so much about the little green men. They're out there, too, believe me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, don't let them scare you. They're not what you think. Uh, get, getting a regression might be a good idea, but I don't recommend it for everyone. And, uh, you know, whatever, you, whatever feels right. And I